Hi and welcome along. In this session I want to have a little bit of an overview and a little bit of a look at local area networks, wireless local area networks and wide area networks and look at what the differences are. So what I've got here is at its simplest form a local area network. Before I go too far, what is a network? When dealing with computers a network is two or more computers connected together for the purpose of sharing information and or resources. And you can see here I have two computers connected together by what is effectively a crossover cable and they can via that cable share those resources. Uh, how would we connect them together? Well each of these computers would have a network adapter. Let me just pull one in. It would look something like this. We've got the network adapter card in the computer and this represents the RJ45 connector, somewhat like an oversized telephone connector. It has eight pins instead of six. Uh, the cable we would use would be this one. Okay, a cat probably these days it would be a category six unshielded twisted pair with RJ45 connectors on the ends and if you want to count them you'll see there's eight pins there. So that is the very basic local area network, two computers connected together. Pretty uncommon. What's much more likely to be seen these days is two or more computers connected together via some sort of central connection device. And in this case, our central device is a switch. In most cases, it's going to be a switch. If I click on this and have a bit of a look, we can see here, this represents our switch. So there's our switch, and you can see it has, in this case, 24 of those RJ45 connectors. It's actually got a couple of additional high-speed connectors, normally for connecting to other switches or routers or dedicated servers. So that's our switch, multiple ports. So in this case, we've got four computers connected to the switch by what's called a straight-through cable. So this represents a fairly common type of local area network. What do we mean by local? Well, geographically localized is local. Normally, you will find this within the one building. They do not span large distances. Uh, the standard Category 6 cable can generally reach distances of about 100 metres. So theoretically, any device can be up to 100 metres from that central switch. Right, moving on. What we have here is pretty much the same topology being the same sort of layout, and you might refer to this as a star topology, the same way this was often referred to as a star topology. You have your central connection device in the middle and all of your computers or hosts or nodes, as they are sometimes called, will be spread out around the outside. Okay. This is pretty much exactly the same star topology, but the difference is our central connection device is not a switch, it is an access point. So this represents a wireless local area network. The main difference is we do not use cables to connect our computers or hosts or nodes to the central connection device, the access point. It uses wireless radio waves to transfer the data. With a cable, it will send the ones and zeros, the binary information, down the cable in the form of voltage, no voltage. In a wireless network, it'll use a basic carrier wave and it will send the ones and zeros wirelessly through the air as a variation to the standard wave. And there's lots of ways that they can introduce those variations, but effectively variations in the standard wave are used to represent ones or zeros. Don't stress about that too much at the moment either. So, this would be your standard wireless local area network. Right. Now, more common, because in the previous one, let me just scroll back, 
it's not that common to have wireless devices connected to a central access point and not connected to anything else. Certainly in a business type environment or even most home networks, you will usually have some sort of mix of cabled, as you can see on the left hand side here, and wireless local area networks, as you can see on the right hand side here. Now notice my computers are connected via cables to the switch and my laptop, tablet and smartphone are connected wirelessly to the access point. And my switch is connected to the access point via a cable. What we've done here is we've taken our local area network and we've added an access point and we have extended our standard local area network to include wireless capabilities. Okay, so we now have a mixed wired and wireless network, but it is still local. It is still not going to traverse any massively long distances. You've still got cable limitations of say about 100 meters. Um, if you want to go to fiber optic cables, yes, they can certainly go longer. And your wireless signals are generally going to travel maybe 70 meters, depending on the type of wireless network you are using. So this is more of a typical local area network that you're going to have in this day and age. You are going to have a combination of wired and wireless. But all this is still local area networks. Right, so what's the difference between a local area network and a wired area network? Well, there's a couple of differences. Distance is one of the main ones. Wide area networks tend to traverse very long distances or they are capable of traversing very long distances. Let me scroll down. Okay, this is our basic wide area network. What we have here is a local area network and then we introduce a router. Routers join networks together. In this case, the router is joining our local area network here on the left hand side to the internet, which is probably the biggest wide area network in the world because it literally traverses the entire world. And this might be referred to this red line as your wide area network link. The link that joins your local area network to other more distant networks. This would be a typical home or small business network with a router connected to the internet. Now, bear in mind the internet symbol I've got is a very small cloud. Theoretically, that should be a much bigger looking cloud to represent the size of the internet being pretty big. So, this is one type of wide area network. Now, one of the other things that differentiates a wide area network from a local area network is everything within your local area network is usually devices that you own or have to purchase. When you start connecting to a wide area network such as the internet, and you would usually do this via a connection to an internet service provider, you are connecting to equipment that you no longer own. You lease that connection. You pay the internet service provider a monthly fee to keep your internet connection up and running. And mostly they manage to do that. Some internet service providers better than others. Not mentioning any names here. Right, so that's the typical small business or home network. Now bear in mind this could have wireless devices on it as well. And it's the router is the device that joins networks together. In a business environment, it's quite common for a business to operate out of multiple physical locations. For example, we might have an office in Perth with multiple computers, and we might also have an office in Sydney with multiple computers. Now, in each of these offices, we can have a router, which might also have internet connections, but we can then set up a dedicated wide area network link between our Perth router and our Sydney router. And this would be a wide area network. By definition, a wide area network would be called, would be uh, two or more local area networks connected together, possibly over very large distances. In this case, here's our Perth network. 
Here's our Sydney network, which consists of both wired and wireless, and the routers are joining those networks together. Now, bear in mind, this red link would be going through the various telcos equipment. We would contact an internet service provider and say, can you provide me with a dedicated connection between my Perth office and my Sydney office? And they would say, yes, we can. We have lots of options. These are the various options. This is the cost of each one on a per month basis. And you would choose what you want. In actual fact, the ISP will bring a connection into your premises. In Perth, they will bring a connection into your premises in Sydney, and you will simply plug your Perth router into that connection. You will plug your Sydney router into the Sydney office's connection. Very similar to what happens in a home environment. When they rolled out the NBN, what they do is they bring the connection to your house. If you're lucky, they bring a fibre connection to your house. If you're unlucky, they use the old copper connection to bring that connection into your house. Before the NBN, the internet connection coming into your house was often ADSL, it was via a phone line. Okay, the phone line coming into your house is owned by the Telco, Telstra. Um, everything inside your house is owned by you, supposedly. Right, so that is a wide area network. I hope that's been beneficial. Thanks very much for watching.